last two games. Great job that time by Josh Allen. He saw Trey Henderson. Lou Anarumo, defensive coordinator. When Taylor got the job in 19, he and Lou had been together in Miami. Because he didn't throw it just to throw it and get... All right, welcome in here to our uh, our latest turn here with our guest, Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. Lou, we just a quick montage of some emotional highlights from you. <laughs> we always appreciate one of our favorite things is to whenever they do check in with a little reaction shot and sneak one on you, they get you every once in a while. They do. I like the one where I'm screaming at the uh, guy holding the chain, like, "What did he do wrong?" <laughs> <laughs> I Give think me that was a player up. running off the field. That was the uh, 12 men on the field oh, oh, in yeah. Baltimore. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Jay, how many of those did you – how many things did you go through trying to find just a couple little gems? I'm curious. I, I went through a lot. I looked at all the explosive plays last year, and they didn't show you in the in the immediate instant after the explosive play. So I made I wanted, I wanted to see if the drive ended in a touchdown. Maybe they show would... you – why aren't we looking team. after why aren't we looking after interceptions, fumbles, big third down stops? What are we doing? <laughs> You're pretty stoic after those, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, the, the one in there towards the end there was after the Minnesota fourth down stop. Yeah. Uh the cele celebration there. You know what though? Like I feel like your whole staff is like this, where a lot of you guys are you know, when we you sit and you talk and in regular life it's very calm, but all of you guys have big old moments out there uh that's just kind of part of it though right that's kind of what makes you guys the coaches that you are is like you can think logically and be very calm but man it matters and it's competitive and emotional when you get out there yeah i think if you didn't see that from us then you'd kind of wonder what's going on because it's such an emotional game it's uh you know football brings out the, the very highs and the very lows of all of us and you're seeing just the raw emotion, as you just pointed out, and how much it means to all of us uh, that we do well. And, um, you know, both when, when our guys are doing well and succeeding, you're going to show show that side of it. And also when, you know, they need a little bit of encouragement. How often um, do friends or family send you clips after they do catch <laughs> something like that on TV? It, it's usually somebody sending me something. It's just <laughs> the San Francisco one I can't let go. It's hard to watch. <laughs> at the end of that game great result but i was mad at something and you know anyway things happen <laughs> things happen it's not well, here's what i i don't want to uh you know there's a lot of different things i think about what what's transpired this offseason we were kind of joking before like no one wants to talk to lou it's this it's the off season of all so many storylines on offense with with burrow how is he looking and t and jamar and the offense is changing and all these weapons and i'm like we, we got to make sure we're we're focused. There's a ton happening on the defensive side of the ball that you've had in your mind. I want to kind of check in on some of your overall process as you wrap up and kind of tie a bow on that part of the year. The biggest thing, obviously, we all know, you know, you've lived it. We just talked about it. Mm -hmm. Fixing explosive plays, right? How mm -hmm. to go about that. What was your process like in attacking that? And, and did you, when you came out of it, did you see some of the biggest changes needed to be made as – personnel scheme how did you attack that yeah i just think making everybody aware of first of all you got to just uh, let's alert everybody okay these are the things that happened these are the things that caused us to be inconsistent last year and and as we mentioned it starts with that right it starts with the explosive plays and chunk plays where you just can't give up and you know letting everybody see it letting everybody know hey the, this is what's why how can we play this better can we you know, adjust something from a scheme standpoint. Um, you know, we put all those things together and the players are, were shown it. And uh, I think we came out of the spring knowing that, you know, feeling good about where we're at and knowing that these things, um, you know, they just don't help you win, clearly. I was talking to Joseph Osai last week and he said that's all that you guys have talked about this offseason, that it has been a big emphasis. Is there is, is there a change that, you, that you've put in that gives you the most confidence that, that it will be better this year? I mean, I, again, I think it's just being, uh, you know, open and honest with the guys that we've, you know, like we've always tried to be is that it's not okay. You know, the, the, you know, the, my bad doesn't work. You know, it's, it's, here's what's, here's the things that uh, went wrong and here's how we're going to fix them. And, you know, and they're, they're well aware of it. So it's good. I'm glad to hear Joseph say that. 
you know, I mean, a lot of the you, what you get personnel where you know communication is going to be emphasized between Vaughn and Gino on the back end, and and the growth that you're expecting communication wise from a lot of other players around them. Where's that at with Vaughn and Gino and Jordan Battle? Throw him obviously in the mix too. Where is that at in your mind? Are we at that 400 level? Are we back to 200? I know Jesse and Jesse and Vaughn obviously operated in the Masters. I don't know where we're at. We're starting out in the program here with these guys. Yeah, we're 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 coming off of a uh, uh, probably a 300 level course. We're in the summer session. By the time we get back, I think we'll we'll have a um, a 400 level course going again. But no, I, I think you know you insert Vaughn back in it, and Gino comes with that same cut from that same cloth and, and Jordan battle keeps getting better at things. So uh, we're drastically improved with that portion and that part of the game from where we were. That uh, you, go, go ahead, Jazz. One more thing I was going to say, I mean, you, you talk about how much stability have you felt like Vaughn has brought his knowledge of everything you do, his veteran leadership showing up, obviously that, you know, we know the reputation of when he shows up, how much do you feel like that has, have you seen that impact filter down in the DB room and safeties in particular? I just think it helps everybody. It helps everything. Um, you know, I think Sam Hubbard maybe made a comment walking out of like early and like, um, you know, like in phase one, you know, uh, we're faced whenever it was where we were all back together, phase two. And he's like, well, Vaughn's back, you know, and Vaughn had said something in a meeting or something and, you know, it just kind of resonated with me and I felt it every day. Like I don't have to, you know, say too much to him. Um, he kind of knows and, and uh, he's kind of picked up where he left off. So very, very excited to have him back. And um, it's not just uh, one thing with him. It's, it's everything, you know, it's, it's, as you mentioned, it's, it's the professionalism. It's how he goes about his business. It's the weight room affecting younger players, uh, he, he's uh, tremendous. It, you look, I mean, you know exactly what you're getting in Vaughn, but, you know, Gino and Sheldon are a little bit, uh, I don't know if you want to say wild cards, but you, it is a little bit of an unknown. Everybody mm -hmm. saw the the pick that, that Gino had in, in week two against Burrow, and then Rankins had that huge game um, with, I think, three sacks. And mm -hmm. But were there any other moments that, that, that really sold you on those guys? Or do you, how much do you even – dip into that in the free agency and, and start kind of scouting these guys? No, we, we look in everything like Gino, you know, comes from Iowa, which is uh, Iowa defensive players. I know Phil Parker for a long, long time, their defensive coordinator there. Those guys are going to come out well coached. And I go all the way back to there. Obviously they play really good defense at Baltimore and, uh, and he's, you know, he's a smart guy. He's got great anticipation and uh, he's another one of those guys where he does not want to make a mistake. Like he, yeah. it is, it affects his day. If he and I'm like, it's OK, you know, we didn't tell you that yet, you know, because Vaughn was saying something maybe that we had done. He's like, well, what was that? And I said, we'll get to that, you know, <laughs> um, and he's he's wanting to know everything right away and, and meet, meeting extra time with Jordan Kovacs. And so very, very happy with him. And, and I think Sheldon uh, Rankins is, is going to, you know, uh, really affect our inside game uh, in a lot of different ways, similar to Vaughn in, in the sense of we've got those two young players in there, you know, with him and BJ and, uh, you know, with Sam and, and Trey Henderson has played with Sheldon uh, down at, uh, so is Vaughn at New Orleans. So uh, there's a lot of, a lot of familiarity there. And, um, you know, I, I just feel like those, those pieces in place will really help us. I, it's a good chance to segue into something I wanted to discuss with you that we've talked a little bit about, but the concept of defensive line rotations, you have so many options this year. You know, you've got a lot of versatile pieces there. You want to get Miles Murphy more run. You've got Sheldon and Jenkins and Hill and like all these different guys. How do you, you know, how do you approach that? Is, is there more of a, a desire to really come in waves this year than the past, partially because you lose a guy like Reader. Maybe we go the money ball route, replace him in the aggregate, right? Like you're going to try to have a couple of different guys that can kind of fill in. How much more do you feel like a rotation it, going deeper is what maybe better fits where you guys are at now or something that you strive to try to accomplish this year more? Well, you know, I think it's a good point. And I think that, 
most of the guys, you know, we're going to start always, most teams do, with a healthy D-line rotation just because those guys, bigger guys, they get tired. You want them fresh in the fourth quarter when it matters. Um, so, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head. We're trying to see how we can replace DJ with maybe a, a, a couple of different pieces. Um, you know, the two young guys will, will play big roles in that, um, you know, and with Chris Jenkins and McKinley Jackson. So, um, you know, we'll, that stuff will get all ironed out in training camp. It's hard to judge any player in the spring, especially O-line and D-line. It's just their jobs are, are required to hit somebody every play. And, you know, we haven't done any of that. So while those guys have done everything we've asked and done a good job with what they've been presented to do, uh, it'll, it'll show itself uh, as we get through training camp. You know, since you and, and Zach have been here, the organization hasn't really wanted to sign guys at 30 or older to these these second, third free agent deals. Well, Sheldon's right on 30. How mindful of that do you have to be? I mean, he's a guy, he's only missed nine games since his rookie year. So he, it's not been an issue with him. But do, how mindful do you have to be of, of a guy getting a little older and, and, and maybe pitch counting him a little more? I think we're always conscious of that, you know, um, uh, you know, the, both the medical staff and our strength staff, they do a great job of monitoring those guys and the way we, the way Zach sets up the spring and training camp. You know, we're trying to make sure that we're hitting, uh, you know, keeping those guys healthy all the way through. Uh, but we'll certainly keep an eye on it. But these guys nowadays, they just keep themselves in such great shape. And, you know, they're always going somewhere to train to do something. So uh, I think it's a little bit different, but you know, he's a guy that certainly stays in shape and, and uh, came came in, in great shape, looking good, and is excited to be here. Okay, I made a bold claim. I don't know if it's bold. Maybe it's not bold to you last week. I uh, I'm buying all the Miles Murphy stock this year after the <laughs> I thought what you saw at the end of last year, you started to see the flashes. You saw a guy who is primed to take that year to jump. I'm calling say I threw 10 sacks out there. I don't know if I should have shouldn't have, but I, I feel like that's a number that's very attainable for him. Am I going to look smart? Am I going to look smart? saying something like that now about Miles Murphy. Well, you you already look smart. Come on, we all know that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't even have my glasses on. If I put those on, it helps. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, li listen, knock on wood, that'd be great. Um, I hope they all have success. And as you mentioned before, you know, we'll have some different packages and different things to get guys reps and make sure that they have the, the most opportunities uh, to make plays. And, um you know, we've got two really good ones, uh, Trey and Sam, um, and then guys will earn their spots behind those two based on situations. One how of those guys. More, how much more flexible is Sam this year? I mean, is he? Are you yeah. looking to use him in different ways, the kick inside, or is that something where you know he's just so good at doing all of it on on that edge where you don't want to mess it? But at the same time, it's like you're you're fighting two masters. You want to find more snaps for Miles. You want to find how. It, what is that balance in your head? Yeah, I think first and foremost, Sam is healthy uh, yeah. coming off of the surgery and um, he's moving around like we know Sam Hubbard can. Um, so, and that just allows us to do more with him. So again, we'll, we'll kind of see how it shakes out, but uh, you know, he's, he, him and him and BJ on that left side, they really do a good job of running games together, um, you know, throughout the cutups that that stood out over the last few years, really. Those those guys work in tandem very well. Um, so, but yeah, Sam Sam can do a bunch of different things, and, and we'll use them that way. You mentioned Sam's health. I, I remember when we talked to you at the at the combine, it was a question about Miles Murphy, but you you brought up Joseph Osai just unprompted and, and said how excited you are to see what he can do with a healthy year. I know the off. You mentioned how that you guys kind of manage the bodies and everything. You don't go super hard in the off season, but but what have you seen? from him so far through a, a healthy OTAs and minicamp. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, and again, I'm, um, I'm all in on Joe and, and I'm hoping with uh, he's, this is the first time since he's been here that he's done nothing but train and, and not rehab. So his body is bigger and stronger. You can see it. Um, you know, he's, he knows the system uh, now been in, in it, being in it now for uh, many years. And, and I just think, um, you know, He's a he's always had a great motor and is always going to go really, really hard. Um, now, I think, you know, let's see what it looks like after training, um, knowing what to do, 
let's just, you know, kind of set him loose out there and see what happens. But I'm excited to see him as well as Miles. There's so many. I mean, because you guys have a lot of heavy investments in recent years at the top of the draft, and, and, and these developments are all kind of like you see the arrow up or you, you hope the arrow continues to go up on so many young guys. I mean, it's like we can talk about this almost all the way across your defense. I mean, it's yeah. like I'm looking – talking about DBs and you talk about Dax Hill and you talk about DJ Turner and you talk about Jordan Battle and, and, and Cam Taylor Britt, who we probably don't even count as a young guy. He's somehow the, the grizzly vet in the room now. Uh, I mean, where, where do you, is, how is that process shaping up for you and how challenging has it been to stay patient throughout of it and, and, and know that the other side is going to, there's, there's, there's the sun is coming up on the other side of this. It's never, you know, it's, it's, it can be tough sometimes with the young guys back there because, you know, those are the guys that will either stop big plays from happening or give big plays up. You know, those are the ones that everybody sees. So, um, you know, we went through some hard times last year with that, but I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, like you said, we'll come out the other side and, and, and really be looking great. And I think all the guys you just mentioned, Dax and, and uh, DJ Turner and, and, you know, all of them, you know, see some out, see how these rookies do when they're out there against, you know, um, real, you know, competition, like in, in training camp against our guys for sure. Um, and then in preseason work, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. One of the best things that any coach can have is uh, competition and we're going to have a ton of it. Yeah. yeah. How, how are, how are Dax Hill's sea legs these days? So far so good. You know, Dax yeah. is getting better every day and, uh, He's challenging himself. He's extra meetings, you know, extra workout on the field. Uh, I'm, I'm, he is, you can see the improvement uh, every day with him. What's the biggest piece there? I mean, doing something that you haven't necessarily done a ton of on, on the outside specifically. I mean, we know he can do slot uh, if, if because of his history there, but like, what's the biggest piece there that you look for to, to see, okay, now I'm seeing that, that he's getting it. Um, I just think, you know, if you see an error or a, a break or an angle that he takes early on and then all of a sudden now he realizes, well, I have to do it this way. And there's some instances this spring where he probably didn't do the right thing early on. And then by the end of the spring, he was he was right on that same error. So, you know, you're seeing that you're seeing him um, kind of get the concept and feel of what we're trying to do with each call. So uh, it, there'll be some some growing pains, hopefully early nothing that causes uh major error or major, you know, big plays, but um, you know, balls in the air, go get it. You know, that's what a corner has to do. You talked about competition being good for everybody. And I think everybody, a lot of people focus on Dax and DJ as that outside corner, but, but now you got Jordan in the mix with the two new safeties and it seems that he was really coming on last year and playing well. And I, mm -hmm. I know you can't worry about feelings or anything like that. You're just trying to put the best 11 out there, but, but how, how much do you have to pay attention to, to maybe not stunning his growth and, and keeping him involved, even though you brought in two guys who presumably are going to start and, and lessen his time. I, I just think that the best thing that happened to Jordan battle is Vaughn Bell and, and Geno Stone. Um, you know, you've got, again, two veteran guys that have been through everything in the league, um, you know, from, uh, uh, you know, starting at the bottom, working their way up, uh, Geno standpoint, you know, uh, late round pick. And then, uh, you know, Vaughn just having been as, as uh, and many years now in the league as he's been. And they're both professionals. They both go about their jobs the right way. And for any young player, it's a, it's a great roadmap of what to do and what not to do. So um, I think, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm happy that we brought these two guys in because it'll affect his career in a positive way going forward. The, the veteran angle there, I mean, it, it, is it kind of the same at, at corner? Would you like to – you've got some open roster spots now to get to 90. Would you like to add a veteran corner to kind of help those young guys along at some point in camp? I mean, you know, we'll see. Um, I, I feel, you know, we're good at most positions. So, um, but you can never have enough rushers and corners. So, you know, if there's one out there that's uh, worthy, I'm sure Duke and those guys will find them. So I'll never say no. Yeah. 
a, a bit a bigger picture for you here. We've spent a lot of time this offseason talking about offensive versatility as the offense has shifted to a lot of these different weapons. Um, you know, whether it's Kasicki and Burton and things like that. And you're seeing that so much more across the league now. Um, maybe not necessarily positionless football, but getting closer to it where defensively you have to be prepared for so much. Um, from a defensive coordinator perspective, what's the hardest part of dealing with that? And 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 what have you tried to make your answer? Is it the same thing you where building a team of positionless DBs uh, can be the, easier to match up with? How do you approach as, as more teams continue to go that direction? I mean, I think you just you just have to have guys that can do, and I've said it all along, multiple jobs. Because if you're just pigeonholed to one thing, um, you know, these days it's it's going to shorten your career if you're not just an elite elite guy. And the, you know, those those second or third guys that can maybe fill a couple roles. Uh, now adding the new kickoff and kickoff return thing, I think that's going to play itself out, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, those guys are going to be asked to do some more of that stuff. So uh, I, I just think from covering tight ends to uh, pressuring to, um, you know, covering all these receivers now the teams put out there, I, I just think the more a guy can do, the better. As a D, DC, I mean, do you do you try to anticipate what the what the next trend might be in the league, or is it just simply a matter of, of reacting to, to whatever offenses are doing and, if you do try to anticipate, do you, you have anything in mind? You think what what the next trend might be offensively? Um, I mean, you kind of see what each you know the successful teams are doing, and then you know we're all copycats in some ways. Where you're gonna, you know, somebody's gonna, hey, this works for them, so let's try to do it to a degree if it fits what you're doing. Um, and it's offensively, you know, more movement before the snap, uh, different types of motions and things like that. Um, you know, uh, I think, you know, I think we're prepared for that, but there'll be something that pops up early in the season. And then you just kind of, all right, Hey, this is kind of the theme this year. Let's, let's make sure we adjust to that. But, uh, you know, we, we've got our, our antennas up for all that kind of stuff. Well, appreciate you joining us here. You're, I know you're, uh, you're, you're into the off time, the very few weeks that you get to really <laughs> relax and, you know, you gotta be feeling so good. The Aaron, the Aaron judge MRI came back negative. <laughs> Everything's looking good there. The Yankees are just killing it. So, I mean, all is well, right? So far, so good with the summer from a, from a baseball standpoint, there's no doubt. Everybody was holding their breath with that. Uh, I guess it hit his hand last night or the night before whenever, but uh, yeah. yeah, it was good. And it was good to see the hockey uh series continue you know so it's good to i'm team canada man it's been way too long yeah. how, can you, how can canada go 31 years and we're still waiting so i i turn it on i didn't and realize say, come on let's go do it for yeah. do it for your countrymen well my rangers are out so um <laughs> you know I, I i'm just i like watching playoff hockey so <laughs> it was good to see that thing continue yeah it was fun it was fun uh well lou thanks i appreciate your time as always yeah. great to have you here enjoy thanks, your time thanks. away hopefully you can get away from it and we'll see you uh we'll see you back at camp awesome thanks guys okay. thanks, thanks lou. lou great to see both of you you too